all good things, right? Hey there folks, it's Overdue Doctor Who review time! And this episode of Council of Geeks is of course brought to you by Radio vs. the Martians. It's a podcast, which means it's free. How awesome is that? Hosts Mike Gillis and Casey Dorn take a look at all manner of geeky subjects, whatever's on their mind. And they do it with a revolving staple of guests. They will talk about anime, they'll talk about wrestling, they'll talk about comics, movies, TV, sci-fi, fantasy, and of course, Every single movie that Arnold Schwarzenegger ever made. Yeah, they were really devoted to that one. Radio vs. the Martians at RadioVsTheMartians.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Oh, uh, so. Stolen Earth and Journey's End. The departure of Donna as the companion. The th it's actually funny going back and revisiting this two-parter because I think in a lot of ways <laughs> a surprising amount of it doesn't really stick in my head while other things are vividly racked into my brain. The main one being um, circumstances uh, and uh, culmination of Donna's actual exit. That breaks my heart. Massively. A lot of the lead up is kind of just typical Davies finale stuff. It's very big. It's very operatic. Um, it's very noisy. And it just, it, it pushes to a very strong emotional climax. But a lot of the steps in getting us there aren't the most memorable things in the world. And I think that's kind of the common thread for his finales. I think that's kind of true of series one. I mean, I, I like, I consider the entire Bad Wolf half of that two-parter to not be particularly good at all. Uh, with Army of Ghosts and Doomsday, Army of Ghosts is all set up with almost nothing being particularly memorable. And Doomsday has all of the weight in it. In, um... Last of the, you know, Sound of Drums, Last of the Time Lords, whenever it's just the Doctor and the Master in the room, it's electric. And other than that, it's, it's again, it's a bit just kind of moving us through the paces. And we kind of get that a little bit here going on, too. There's still a lot to like, though. This does feel, uh, in some ways, like a, a bit of a celebration of the reinvented Doctor Who up to that point. And... A lot of that has to do with everybody that comes back. I think this does a pretty good job of not only bringing back, you know, Jack Harkness and Sarah Jane Smith, but bringing in the cast, or at least some of the cast, from their respective spin-off shows that were already going on at that time. So Sarah Jane Adventures and Torchwood, and making it still work for people who had not seen those. You get enough of a sense that Jack has this team and, you know, so he, there's Yanto and there's Gwen. Or, you know, Sarah Jane gets to talk a little bit about the computer, Mr. Smith, and Luke, her son. Not a ton, not a ton of time spent. And obviously, if you know those shows, you know a lot more about these characters. But it's pretty well integrated. It doesn't feel like, oh man, I'm just being dropped in the middle. I have no idea what's going on. It's surprisingly well handled. That plus bringing in just a ton of characters besides. We have Harriet Jones coming back, Rose, Mickey, Jackie. It really is a loaded story, this one. Plus, we're bringing back Davros into the modern era, who hasn't been here up to this point, along with the return of the Daleks. Dalek Khan is back. And we're paying off so many of the mystery boxes that have gone on this season. There's actually, and there's actually quite a few of them there. Well, there's something on your back got paid off last story. But other than that, we've got the bees disappearing and the planets, um, you know, vanishing. And all, and the Dr. Donna and all of this stuff all getting paid off. So given everything this two-parter's doing... It's actually kind of surprising that it works as well as it does. Um, as much as, you know, I feel like it, it was kind of an odd experience watching it because a lot of it's like, oh, yeah, that's right, there is this and that. But 
there's also something a little bit off. And I was gonna say it's a I'd say a little bit off about Tennant. But it's not his fault, I don't think. I think it's the writing. I do think the one area that suffered by all of the plot mechanics that are at work in order for Davies to pull off what he's pulling off here is that the Doctor doesn't actually get a lot to do. The Doctor just kind of gets shuttled from bit to bit and without a lot of time to pause, not a lot of bits to, to pause for fun banter or... Um, you know, where he kind of takes control of the situation. He's just kind of getting shuttled through the story. And it was occurring to me, you know, watching it, he just, he spends a surprising amount of time in this two-parter just sort of standing still and, sh and shouting impotently. No, Davros, you can't! Listen to me! No, just listen! Like, he does, he has lines like that a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. And they always feel a little bit off. Another, like, the first one that seems off is when Donna brings up uh, Pyrovile. Uh, or uh, or Paravilia, sorry, is the planet. Um, because, you know, she remembers from Fires of Pompeii. And they're like, no, that vanished thousands of years ago. And the Doctor has to go, oh, that's brilliant. They've been taking out of time and space. And the line feels like it comes out of nowhere. And it, you can t it feels like he feels awkward saying it. He's just going to go, Donna, that's brilliant. And, like, it doesn't have the flow and the, and the you know, just the smooth going of their dialogue that it usually has. So I think part of what happened here is... Davies got so focused on being sure that the plot mechanics all worked in order to have everyone he wanted in the story and for it to get to where he wanted to get to that he lost some of the flow of some of these characters, the Doctor especially. It does kind of come back um, by the end once, you know, sort of the major plot mechanics are done being played out. Um, and, you know, we've got the Metacrisis Doctor, and we've got the, the Doctor done, and all that stuff. It does sort of, it smooths out at that point. But up to that point, there's a lot of surprisingly clunky dialogue. Um, which is odd, because I don't remember that really being an issue with too many of Davies' scripts up to this point. But it did really kind of jump out at me this time. But, um... That's and that's kind of my major complaint about this. But other than that, all you know, it's it's fun to see everybody back. It is kind of really cool that you know he gets everybody around the TARDIS console and the thing actually flies smoothly for once because it's got as many pilots as it's supposed to have. Um, Julian Beach does a really good job as Davros. Uh, he, yeah, he sells that part really well. He has the anger. Um, but he's, he's also got that, you know, the voice is, is really well done. They got just the right amount of modulation on it. Um, I also like the Supreme Dalek. His voice isn't quite as booming as the Dalek Emperor from back in Series 1, but I, I like, there's something about the slightly bigger, slightly bulky, bulkier, slightly deeper voice on, uh, on the Supreme Dalek that I just enjoy. Um, so I just find entertainment in that. Uh, Donna firing off a million words a minute, you know, once, once the whole Dr. Donna thing happens, that's a lot of fun. Um, the, the payoff of Rose getting the Metacrisis Doctor to herself, that, that was, that was well done because that, that whole thing could have felt like it undermined Doomsday, but it didn't. It felt like, look, you're not going to have exactly what it is you want, but you can have this and I hope you can be happy with that. And that, yeah. That worked for me. And then, of course, when we get to the end and we've got Donna realizing what's going to happen, the doctor coming to wipe her memory and her just shaking her head, no, no. Like, she, he takes her choice away. She would rather die than forget, but he doesn't let her make that choice. He makes it for her against her wishes. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I, I, I get why he doesn't want to watch her die. But he, he takes that choice from her. 
And that's a heavy decision, and it's played properly on that front. And then, you know, Wilf seeing her and his face just falling, that... <sighs> that's rough going. So this thing by the very end definitely absolutely lands its true emotional gut punch um, for the end. But I, I just, I feel like, I, I, I almost said that I feel like the plot got away from Davies. It didn't. He actually kept the plot in line, but I think he lost sight of some of the other stuff that is great about Doctor Who and Tenant's Doctor in, in specific. And it's just missing some of the charm. Uh, I feel like it needed, like, one more polish pass to, to you know, button up the, the dialogue so it feels more free-flowing, feels more fun. But we don't get that. What we get, though, is still, um, is still a very solid piece of work. I just wish it... I just wish the dialogue flowed better, honestly. That, that's just the thing. And it's, that can feel like a nitpick, but at the same time, because, you know, dialogue's a major component, it's something that kind of keeps coming up across the story, which bums me out a bit. I have a feeling that when I do my ranking, this, this story has probably actually gone down slightly in my estimation, because I think it's been so long since I rewatched all of it, um, that I think the stuff that really stood out, which... I love and, you know, hurts me in the best way. You know, the stuff with Donna um, and, you know, Davros being very memorable and stuff like that had all kind of bubbled to the surface and the rest had kind of fallen into the background. But watching it, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. That was a little bit of a bummer. So, <laughs> I have to wonder, when I, make, when I make criticisms like that, are people going to go, oh, yeah, he's kind of right? Or are they going to go, this guy's... He, he's trying to ruin something that's awesome. Make it... We must stop him! I don't know. We'll see. Uh, and we'll see because of the comments section. So whatever your thoughts are on this story, drop something down in the comments and let's talk about it. There's other stuff to do down there as well because buttons, links, the like button is a big help lately. Folks been hitting it and I appreciate it. Um, there's also the Patreon if you want to help support this and make all of this better than it already is, hopefully. Um, there's other links besides, you know, social media is my P.O. box, my book, etc., etc. So click on the links, give them a look, or don't. I'm not going to say you have to do it, because at the end of the day, folks, you're the council. I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned. Thank you.